Hello, welcome to our economic and market update, first quarter of 2022. So excited to be here with you and to share with you just a few thoughts on what's going on in the economy and the stock market and what things you need to know uh, right now. So a couple things about me, um, for my clients, you already know all this, but if you happen to be someone who's uh, just uh, maybe came along our website or uh, was introduced by one of our, our wonderful clients to us, um, I've been helping people. My name is Jeff Selke. I've been helping people since 1998 with investment management, uh, financial planning. Uh, I'm the president of Selke Financial Group and JRS Wealth Management. Um, I'm the author of Making Your Dream Retirement a Reality and Retire Today, two books on retirement. I've been ranked in the top 1% of financial advisors nationwide uh, since 2005 by a group called MDRT. I'm a chartered financial consultant, which is a designation that requires nine college level courses passing a test on each of those. I've appeared regularly on CNBC or CBS, ABC, uh, actually CNBC, uh, Fox, Business News, some different show TV programs. Um, I have a radio show. I'm on uh, the radio every Saturday uh, on KNRS at 2 to 3 p.m. and KSL from 8 to 9 p.m. And I am a fiduciary and investment advisor and I'm happy to be here today. In share this information with you. The agenda today is we're going to cover the current state of the economy and the markets. Where do we go from here? Um, first thing I want to talk about is what's going on now. Uh, so just in the month of January, the stock market had a correction, uh, went down about 10% at one point, even a little bit further. Um, so the market is in a little bit of a pullback um, and that can be scary. And so a lot of people are wondering what's going on. Well, there's a lot of things going on. One, the stock market is working off some of the excesses. The market has come too far too fast and you know a lot of things the pricing really got silly uh really expensive um cryptocurrency speculation was high and uh, all sorts of other things going on and a lot of the prices didn't make sense it's kind of like real estate right now uh prices don't make sense right uh, so eventually things got to pull back so it's just a little bit of a pullback um, there's worries about inflation and and that is a real issue inflation last year was seven percent according to the government so uh, inflation is here to stay for the next probably couple of years. So that's a real issue. Um, and then will the Fed really raise high, hike rates? Uh, the Federal Reserve has said they're going to raise rates three times in 2022. And the market is wondering if they're going to have to raise rates four times or maybe even five times to help tamp down inflation to really try to get it to go down. And then you've got Russia, Ukraine. You know, is that even a legitimate concern? Are we going to go to war over this? Uh, we obviously hope not, but uh, you know that's just a concern that's in the news right now. What's really happened is the most speculative companies, the companies that went up probably the most over the last couple of years, have dropped substantially, 50, 60, 70, 80 percent drops. These are just a few of the stocks that have dropped over 50 percent in the last six months. Um, it's happening big time to any company that is not profitable. Um, think of companies like... Uh, there's a company called Rivian, which is an electric vehicle maker. They haven't made any money yet and their stock price went up a bunch, but now it's down 66%. It's down two thirds from where it was about six months ago. And that's just because uh, the market is saying, hey, if you're not a profitable company, we don't even know if you're gonna be around or selling off. And so you're seeing some big losses, especially in companies that don't make a lot of money or haven't made any money yet. Um, you know, corrections happen all the time and it can be scary when the market drops five, 10, even 15%. But if you look at this, um, this is just saying, for example, um, if we go to the far right side, every nine years on average, the stock market has a 30% loss or more. So every nine years, something like that happens. Every four years, the market drops 20% um, or more. Um, and then kind of 10% every 1.6 years, it's almost every year really that the market has about a 10% correction, meaning it comes back, goes down about 10%. So it is not abnormal in a, even in a good year for the market to have a bad, a bad month or two. Um, this chart, this is a very busy chart, but what it's showing, the red dots represent the, the amount the stock market went down inside of that year at one point. So for example, if you can look at, um, and now this is a, obviously a crazy example, but the far right, um, the second to the right column that where it says 16% positive is what the S&P 500 finished at for 2020. But if you look down at one point, the stock market was down 34%, that little red dot at the bottom. 
So even in a, what turned out to be a great year, the market at one point was down 34%. So on average, on average, the stock market has a negative 14% drop, even in good years. That's the average pullback in the markets. So for the stock market to drop 5, 10, even up to 15%, is not necessarily something to freak out about. It can be scary, and especially when you see your accounts go down, it's scary, and nobody likes that. But it's not something to be overly concerned about, unless there are lots of other factors that are gonna cause the market to go down even farther. And, um, and so if that happens, then that's an issue. You know, All of us wanna avoid that next 40, 50, 60% drop of the stock market that is gonna come at some point. But the little declines of five to 10%, we need to try to not be too concerned about that because they happen all the time, every year. And if you feel like you can't stomach that, then that may be telling you that you shouldn't be in the stock market or in real estate or anything that is risky. Um, you may wanna look at more, more conservative, safer assets. And that's something we can talk about as well, if that's how you're feeling right now. Um, here's just an overall, just quick summary, what we like. Things that we like that are going on in the economy and the markets right now, earnings are very strong, meaning revenue. Companies are making a lot of money. Uh, we have a red hot job market. Um, there are 11 million open jobs right now um, and not even that many unemployed people. So um, there's just an overabundance of jobs available. Cash is everywhere. The, the, the government and the Fed printed lots and lots of money and that's out there now and it has to be spent or invested. And there's trillions of dollars sitting in bank savings accounts, checking accounts. Um, there's just so much money out there that needs to be spent or invested. And that will help the economy and the stock market. Uh, the Fed will stay accommodative if needed, uh, but they're saying they're going to start pulling back. Household balance sheets are great. We're not in a 2008 scenario where people have overburdened themselves. Um, people have a lot of equity in their homes, and that's really good. Corporations are flush with cash. Banks are solid as far as having a lot of money on hand um, and not taking as much risk as they did in 2008. Um, high yield bonds are holding in nicely. Uh, so what are the things that we worry about? Markets are not cheap. They're overvalued. They're, they're a little bit expensive, actually. Um, there's too much excess in niche parts of the, the market. Uh, investor compla complacency. It got too easy. The last few years, we've gotten used to the market just going up. And so it's been very easy to sit back and say, oh, the market's just always going to go up. And then when it goes down, we kind of start to freak out because we've lost five or 10 or 15%. Um, so that's a real issue. Inflation will hurt earnings and margins, some, and more over time as inflation keeps going. Uh, the market is too top heavy in a few companies. There's a few companies that move the market. So if they go up, then the market goes up. If they go down, the market goes down. Um, there's too many junky assets building up. We call them zombie companies. These are comp companies that don't even have enough money coming in to pay their debt. So think about if you're not making enough money to pay your mortgage, what happens? Well, you probably miss a mortgage payment and you lose your home. So these companies are having to borrow to pay down their debt. Uh, so they're adding more debt just to pay the interest on their loans. That's not a good thing. Um, geo of course, we always have geopolitical rest with risks with uh, China, Russia, and all sorts of other things going on. So those are some of the things that we worry about. Uh, the fundamentals of the economy are excellent. I'm going to go through this really quickly. Um, S&P 500 earnings are at all-time highs, meaning revenue. Companies made more money in 2021 than they've ever made before, the big companies that make up the stock market. So companies are making money, they're profitable. That's a good thing for the, for the stock market and the prediction or the estimate is that those revenues are even going to be higher this year in 2022. That's a good thing for the stock market. Um, again, earnings, sales growth was up. Everything looked really good in 2021. And actually comparing it to 2019, we had phenomenal growth. So, and 2019, if you can remember back, was a great year. It was a great year. The, the economy was humming, unemployment was low, everything was great. Well, 2021 was even better for these big companies. Um, margins are exceptional, meaning this is profit margins, highest ever. So companies are making more money and they're earning, they're earning more money and, and keeping more of it, more of their profits. So that's a good thing for the stock market. Labor market, again, is red hot. Unemployment's very low. There's very, very few people who don't have a job. And those people who don't have a job, they could have one, maybe not the exact job they want. And that's, that's very true, but there are a lot of job openings right now. Uh, in fact, there's 11 million job openings right now. That's that left-hand uh, chart. So 
lots and lots of jobs out there. Um, household debt service ratio is very low, meaning how much are we of our income are we having to use to pay for debt, to service our debt, our mortgage, credit card debt, things like that. At about 9% at the end of last year, it's the lowest it's been in a long time. That is outstanding. Um, household net worths are higher because our stock accounts are higher, our retirement accounts are higher, and our homes are worth more. So that's a good thing. Um, cash is everywhere. There's th approximately $3.5 trillion sitting in checking accounts alone. So, so much cash out there. It doesn't even make sense. There's just lots of cash from stimulus, from people saving, people worried about, you know, could I lose my job if the economy shuts down? There's just lots and lots of money sitting on the sidelines right now. Again, home equity has gone up, whereas our debt load has not gone up very much. And so that's a really good thing. Um, we're actually looking really good. Now, there are many things to worry about. Um, valuations are high. What this chart is showing is just that valuations are high. Uh, the stock market, of course, is high, but the valuations are high, meaning it, it's expensive. It's not cheap. And that's an issue. Um, that doesn't mean the stock market cannot go higher, but at some point, it's got to revert to the mean. And so that would mean a downturn. Um, again, zombie companies hitting an all-time high as far as companies that cannot service their debt load. Uh, they can't pay their bills, so to speak. That's not a good thing. Those companies are heading towards uh, bankruptcy unless something good happens for them. Um, the market is very top heavy. Just Apple alone at the end of 2021 reached a, a worth, a value of $3 trillion. So Apple became worth more than Walmart, Disney, Netflix, Nike, Exxon, Exxon Mobil, uh, Coca-Cola, McDonald's, AT&T, Goldman Sachs, Boeing, IBM, and Ford combined. Think about that. One company, Apple, worth more than all of those companies that are amazing companies that have been around some of them for 100 years or more. Apple's worth more than all of them combined. Um, so that really shows you that a few companies, Google, Apple, Amazon, have taken over and, and Microsoft and they make up a huge, huge part of the stock market. Um, and so they move the market. If they go up, market goes up. If they go down, the market goes down. That's, that's a big thing. Um, this is just showing the price to earnings ratio for the top 10 companies, that green line. It's basically showing the value that they've gone up so much that they're highly overvalued compared to the rest of the market. So uh, we've got inflation. We know rates are moving higher. The Fed has said they're going to raise rates three times in 2022, and the stock market is digesting that and wondering if they're going to have to raise rates three or four or five times just to help tamp down, bring down inflation, uh, because inflation is a real issue right now. Um, we've had a huge jump in retirement. A lot of people are retiring early, earlier than they planned, um, probably due, due to the pandemic and shutdowns and just feeling like, hey, I don't want to, I don't want to deal with this anymore. So a lot of people are retiring much more than um, historically had been just in the last two years. So 2020 and 2021, a lot of people are retiring. In fact, an additional 1.5 million retired um, and just in the last, in the year after the pandemic started. So that's really changed things. There's a lot less people out there looking for work. Um, retail sales reached an all-time high last year. So it dipped big time in 2020, but it came back strong. And inventories on the right side, the purple chart, show that inventories are at their lowest level in years. Um, that's bad. That's that's not good. You know, companies don't have the inventory. They're not getting the goods and supplies they need. Um, this is auto inventories are way down. So there's you can't find you know the new car you want. You may not be able to find. And used cars are super expensive. On the right, that just shows that now a one-year-old used car is about as expensive as a new car. Well, that doesn't make any sense, right? but um, that's what's happening when you can't find new cars. Inflation is an issue. Historically, the best inflation hedges have been real estate and stocks. Equities are stocks. Uh, green is the stocks, yellow is the real estate. Um, gold is in there. You can see gold hasn't really done that much compared to inflation, um, neither has oil. Um, so really long-term, the stock market and real estate are your best hedges against inflation. Uh, so what's our game plan? If, if we're managing your money, then we're doing that. So if you have us, if JRS Wealth, Selkie Finance Group, if we are managing your money, then you don't have to worry. If you're managing your own money, you may want to think about rebalancing your portfolio, sell when you can, not when you have to, avoid complacency, complacency, stay disciplined, know what you own. Don't blindly just buy any stock. Make sure it's a high quality company that has profits and is not going away. Know what you own, 
Um, own high quality assets, expect volatility. Again, the stock market has big ups and downs, even in good years. Uh, barbell of your approach, have some safe assets. Even though you're gonna get lower returns, it makes sense to have some safe assets. If you're not sure what that is or where to put money where it can be safe and still have the chance for good growth, give us a call um, and we'd be happy to tell you about some ideas and consider some alternative ways of making money in this new age. And there's lots of different things that we can talk about. Here's some disclosures and here's our contact information. If you have any questions, feel free to email us, call us. Uh, hope this economic and market update was helpful, gives you some good information. And if you'd like to learn more, feel free to reach out to us. Uh, have a great day and wish you the best. Bye now.